All praises, honor, glory, dominion, and power to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai Bashim Rakar Kadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles that great millstone to rule well. The salutations and blessings to the hopeful elect Akiyam. I want to get into the rawness of the scriptures, the severeness, Shalakia, the severity of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai as well as was lied to us our whole lives okay the common concept uh misconception about the most high is that he's all love and he's that he's soft okay and anything pertaining to the scriptures and the most high and his son is just all fucking gravy all right that it's on some on some weak feeble frail type spirit okay and all all loving fucking uh pushover type spirit that couldn't be farther from the true attributes of the heavenly father and his son man okay and when you look all throughout these scriptures you see how uh how severe that they were okay and how the Most High is not playing any fucking games with his creation. All right. But this whole concept of stoning is extremely raw. Okay. The whole idea of fucking tearing somebody apart with with uh, with stones. Okay. It's breaking their bones, right? It's uh, gashing and abra- uh, uh, causing them abrasions and shit. Uh, fucking blunt force trauma, which is the what it, what ultimately is the cause of death. Getting um, those those rocks smacked up against your skull. All right, and we're gonna go into the purposes of that. How important it is for the entire congregation or the men will say the men of the congregation to participate in the judgment man okay it's a way that the most high is a uh, um allowing his congregation to take part in uh removing wickedness from the congregation out of israel man you see it says stoning or lapidation is a method of capital punishment where a group throws stones at a person until the subject dies from blunt trauma. All right. When you look at uh, he so surely be put to death. When, um, when you look at these scriptures in Leviticus and Deuteronomy, um, when it talks about their blood shall be upon them and that uh, they should surely be put to death, that uh specifically goes into capital punishment in the um in the blue letter okay and let's get it for um ah Salakia no 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 I believe that's in the NLT let's check it in the NLT for Leviticus twenty and thirteen for edification's sake In the NLT, it says, ooh, there it is. Leviticus 20 and 13 in the, in the NLT. If a man practices homosexuality, having sex with another man as with a woman, both men have committed a detestable act. They must both be put to death, for they are guilty of a capital offense okay so punishment capital punishment is due to a capital offense okay and there are many capital offenses in the scriptures that we're going to be outlining real, real quick um in this in this uh website okay but uh this word lapidation pretty much goes into um when you look at the word dilapidated, when something is fucking dilapidated, or to to dilapidate as a verb, it means to cause something to come to a ruin. Okay, 
cause something to come to ruin, all right? And that's indeed what happens to the human body when it's being fucking pelted by stones, man. And one thing through the spirit I was thinking about meditating on is that they weren't fucking pebbles, man. Or even uh, uh, MLB uh, regulation fucking size baseballs or softballs, man. And a lot of these uh, different depictions and images you see, they had fucking boulders, man. All right. Or you take think about Jake and how he, you know, tosses the rock in these different sports. You can imagine like a, a fucking stone the size of a basketball. And you have Jake over there uh, doing the shot put, right? On on the target, which is that motherfucker who's, who's guilty of that capital offense, okay? Or when you look at dodgeball, this, um, that whole concept, right? Uh, dodgeball size stones or volleyballs, very, um, not only within the realm of possibility, you got to understand what is naturally occurring, what what kind of uh, sizes and different range of of um, of characteristics that these different that these different stones had, man. Because you just gathered them on the spot and then put and then uh, started hurling them, okay. And I, one of the brothers posted a couple of years ago on the group me. A fucking uh, <clears throat> a clip of a modern day stoning, okay, and it was beautiful. You had the whole town, the whole village, surrounded around this motherfucker, and they and they and they let him go. All right, they let him go. And after you find out what it, the purpose is for, man, it's it's spiritual. It's beautiful. It says. It has been attested as a form of punishment for grave misdeeds since ancient times. Okay. Let's see. Okay, here it is. Here are some of the counts. Here are some of the um, the crimes punishable by stoning. Okay. And most of them consisted of idolatry under that whole umbrella. All right. I, um, idolatry and rebellion. Because it's encompassed in that when you are worshiping self. All right. And you have a horde away from the most high. All right. That's what Israel characteristically, the one, the um, the main primary ways that this nation has strayed away from the Heavenly Father. It was with uh, replacing him with fucking idolatry, man, with false gods. But there it goes. It says, um, touching Mount Sinai, where the Most High was giving Moses. The Ten Commandments. What is that? That's fucking uh, disobedience, man. Okay. Um, breaking the Sabbath. All right. Giving one's offspring to Molech. We know what that is. That's fucking idolatry, man. And it's going to keep going. Having a familiar spirit. What do you think that is? All right. Attempting to convert people to other faiths. See? Which goes into a... Um, a to be a fucking apostate. All right. Cursing the Most High. Engaging in idolatry. Rebellion, which is the sin of witchcraft. Okay. A bride presented as a virgin then found out to, to have willingly engaged in sexual intercourse with a strange man. While betrothed, while, uh, while a betrothed damsel. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and there's there's a whole hell of a lot of, of that going down in our society, in our current day Israel, um, it, Israel being a people before it's a place, the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, 
are riddled with all these offenses, man. Okay? So you have a bunch of, of fugitives from from judgment that are walking around. But uh, just for a short time, is the most high slack concerning his promises? Man, he's going to kill these motherfuckers. And they're going to know by death, by pain. All right? This is going into more of the um, civil, I believe, civil type of laws. You know? Fucking uh, adultery and all that type shit. All right? And then... um. Even in it, it goes on to show you to show you how fucking backwards this place is. Even in early Christianity, it was, um, it was pretty much an understanding that you you've got to you've got to kill people, you've got to put people to death for for their actions, man, for certain uh, grave deeds. All right, you gotta you gotta rid that motherfucker from the earth. See, because that thing spreads like a cancer. You're ridding wickedness from uh from our, the congregation, man. So that cancer doesn't spread, and then what will become of us? Okay, will come to ruin, come to naught. Mm, let's see. In early Christianity, where the fuck was that? Okay, here it is. Um, the late American Calvinist and Christian Reconstructionist cleric, Rusas John uh, Rushduni, his son Mark and his son-in-law Gary North supported the reinstatement of the Mosaic Law pen- penal sanctions. Under such a system, the list of civil crimes which carried a death sentence by stoning, which would include homosexuality, adultery, incest, lying about one's virginity, <laughs> bestiality, witchcraft, idolatry, or apostasy, public blasphemy, false prophesying. That's what I wanted because we already went into all these things before, right? Being a mole, fucking uh, popping another man's woman, lying with your damn family. Um, uh, capping about about you being um f- brand new, fresh. These bitches, right? Laying down with a fucking animal, of course, witchcraft and idolatry, and being apostate. That's all under the same category in blasphemy, right? Bearing kidnapping, rape, bearing false witness. But check it, false prophesying, man. So you have these jakes out here that are prophesying, that are fucking, they're lying on the scriptures, man. They're they're, uh, prophesying false um, prophecies, man. Okay. They're complete false fucking prophets. And they're they're actually, um, their infractions are very grave. All right, there's not just the little, the the kind of semi-minor matters like um, having your head uncovered, which is not a minor matter, but just compared to others, right? And these other these other shit that these fucking camps go off on, but um, on even on very severe matters like the MOTB, okay, which we know is is the uh, the hour of temptation that's said to befall all mankind. So you speaking before falsely about this, uh, um, about what this MOTB is, is fucking, um, it's punishable by death, all right? By our Israelite um, congregation sanctioned, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai sanctioned um, uh, congregation congregational participation in putting that subject to death. All right. So what just might happen to these niggas, man? What just might happen to these fucking niggas that are prophesying falsely? All right. 
And it's come out that they're doing it for, for filthy lucre's sake, straight up. There's no reason why in fucking hell, uh, even after all the uh, revelation about this thing, that you would uh, be be speaking on anything else than uh, the implantable fucking uh, hardware, all right? That implantable digital uh, technology that that indeed is the uh, the MOTB, okay? Bought and fucking paid for. The Most High is going to destroy him, man. It is spiritual because he's going to allow his elect in the culmination of um, of the destruction, pretty much in this climax that's about it's about to go down. All right, this is pretty much um, the the climax, the culmination of this whole timeline that we've been in since the most highest creation. And then all the way until when it stretches out into eternity, one of the biggest fucking, um, events is going to be this destruction, man, because it's going to be all, um, encompassing with the calamities and, uh, uh, cataclysm that the most high is going to unleash on this place. And then, um, coupled with, the the missiles and Yahushua's return, okay. The entire world seeing his him return in uh, blazing glory, if you will, okay, in a fiery vengeance, like it says, um, destroying all them that know not the Most High, okay. And then with that, the elect, which is really who Israel is. Who's, who the primary of Israel, like it says, all Israel is not of Israel. Like it's like, like Apostle Bar, like Apostle Tahar was going into that nation not desired that's going to return is only the elect. It's only about the elect. All right. So who's going to be able to participate in ridding Israel, the, ridding our congregation of wickedness, huh? It's going to be the elect when he turns them into hunters. All right, so that's going to be like the um, the fix, uh, the the fix, or the um, like the the true expression and intention of what the Most High had for that stoning. <laughs> All right, it's going to be like the um, uh, not necessarily reconciliation. That's not the word I'm looking for. It's going to be kind of like the, uh, and not a redo, so lock you for lack of the term, but um, it's going to be like the chance to, to do it right, all right? Like Yahweh Shai was, this, was the last Adam. What the Mosai had, that whole idea is going to be um, fulfilled uh, fully when Israel, when the elect gets that last chance to put hands on Israel. All right. Apostles and elders talk about it all the time that they're going to do the pole vault over crowds of Edomites so they can get their hands on these fucking GMO baby niggas and spicks. All right. This is in Leviticus 24 and 16. And he that blasphemeth the name of Yahweh Bashim Shai. He shall surely be put to death, and all that the congregation shall certainly stone him, as well the stranger as he that is born in the land, when he blasphemeth the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, shall be put to death. Okay. So the whole congregation participated in uh in killing this man, man. Huh? All right, in in uh, lapidating him, in causing him to come to a ruin. All right, and seeing the flesh tear away from his body, as those stones are 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 uh fucking scraping past past his flesh, right, and then the ones that make that that uh that direct hits. 
those direct uh, strike impacts is causing that um those fucking contusions and that internal bleeding and the ultimately that that blunt that blunt trauma okay we all took part in that and what kind of adrenaline do you think those participants were in all right and what kind of a um a spiritual uh state that they they must have been in huh because of course we're giving the praises to you. How about you, me? I was shy. Okay. Feverishly. All right. And and what is the, this? What was this capital offense here? Which is the the main one? Is blasphemy, man. Okay. Fuck. Hey, these people are gonna are, are gonna suffer. A really fucking bad one, man. For their for their uh for their back talk to you how about Shimmy Al Shai, for their blasphemy and fucking uh all out ultimate disregard for the creator of the universe, man. All right, they're gonna feel it bad. All right, this is right here in Deuteronomy twenty one and eighteen. If a man have a stubborn a rebellious son which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastened, uh, chastened him, will not hearken unto them, then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of the city and unto the gate of his place. And they shall say unto the elders of the city, This is our son, this our son is stubborn and rebellious, he will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he die. Okay. So here it says, in the other account, it was the congregation right here. It's the entire city. Okay. That's a big gathering. But why? As aforementioned, it was so that we could participate in removing uh, wickedness from from the camp. It says, "Here's the point." And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones, that he die. So shalt thou put away evil from among you, and all Israel shall he hear and fear. Okay, so that's the purpose. What a brutal fucking way to go out for the other. Uh, for other Israelites to now fear and for that to that thought and that prospect of, of that happening to them will prevent them from committing wicked acts, man. And that's what you have that's so fucking far removed from us as a people. You have um, motherfuckers condoning each other, okay? Because we call, um, it's called our neighbor, we're, we're neighbors, um, we're family, we're brothers. Talks about the whole family have I brought thee, right, into captivity. Where Salaki is like, um, only you have I known of all the families of the earth. All right, we're just extended family, neighbors. But what do we have, um, what are we encouraging in the way, each other in the way of, of complete fucking debauchery? And filthiness, all right? When you look at motherfucking social media, which is the worst thing going right now, is the biggest influence of wickedness on the planet. Since you had that, um, the advent of social media came the complete proliferation of wickedness on the earth. And uh, primarily what we're speaking about is in our, in our nation, man. Okay? Jake teaching each other to do complete fucking madness. Okay. <clears throat> so there there's a requirement to to put that evil away from among you, man, to fucking kill that cancer so it doesn't spread. You see? And that's gonna culminate when we fucking oh uh, when the most high completely annihilates two thirds of the nation of Israel. See? <clears throat> finishing off Leviticus in 19 and 17 
Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So you're suffering sin upon your camp, upon your congregation, by even letting a motherfucker live. All right. What does it talk about? Um, uh, a witch. Okay. You're suffering that, uh, them to live. All right. That's, that is extremely poignant because by allowing this motherfucker to stay alive, and not participating in his destruction and his in his uh, punishment, you're suffering him to live, and therefore you're uh, causing the pollution, um, and you are complicit in the pollution of our congregation, man. This is in is it Exodus twenty two and eighteen. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Okay, so the the earth. And the congregation and everything around it, and even the person himself, is suffering by them still fucking living. Okay? So this is a super fucking uh, uh, commandment, requirement, man. It's likened into you hating your brother by not, um, your brother and then your, uh, the, uh, the rest of the congregation by not fucking, um, you know, by not hurling the, them rocks. And ultimately, that's um, what Israel and all these other fucking camps and the the so-called Christian church, those harlot houses are guilty of, man, of not um, reproving and rebuking and uh, what's that other one? It's um, not edify, but it's, uh, oh, that's like, yeah, I think it's reproof, gone. Reproving your your brethren, man, and the rest of the congregation. All right. Ultimately, we're not going to have to worry about this in the kingdom, but it's the the elect that is going to uh, to get this. All right. It's the elect that's going to uh, have the full encompassing understanding of this concept, man. All right. Only, what does it say? Only a remnant shall return. All right. And then in, and in that, we're going to be able to not get our hands dirty. Um, we're going to be able to play, so to speak. Okay. Participate in them games. The, the, the hunger game. The hunting games that the Most High has set up for his men. All right. And it's it's heavy because with the purging of the two thirds, like this whole thing is talking about ridding ridding wickedness from our congregation, with the purging of the two thirds is actually going to come. It's going to come now the eternal kingdom. Now when that fucking that cancer of the two thirds is now removed and purged, then we're going to be able to come into kainos. All right. And so with that. Call all your hell, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rukakadash.